appreciate the opportunity. Um, Freedom Works is one of those organizations that is constantly uh, challenging uh, the status quo in Washington, D.C. A lot of people would have you believe that this, uh, this battle uh, that just played out in Washington is Republicans versus Democrats. But I'm here to tell you that is not the case. Mm-hmm. It is Washington establishment versus America. Mm-hmm. And that's how it has to be postured, and that's the way the fight is being fought. Uh, I uh, completely agree with uh, everything Senator Lee just said. I was on uh, Anderson Cooper uh, last week, and at the very end of the program, this was just right after uh, the vote was taken in the Senate uh, on the continuing resolution and, and raising the debt ceiling yet one more time and kicking the can down the road. And I uh, made the prediction. I said, I'm going to make a bold prediction right now, Anderson. I predicted in the next three months that that the Democrats uh, and uh, President Obama are going to delay uh, the individual mandate all by themselves. And he said, no, that's not going to happen. They'll never do that. I mean, they they, uh, uh, were willing to fight the fight, even allowing government shutdown to occur. Why would they do that? And... uh, I'm going to be uh, totally vindicated uh, probably uh, as early as next week. Some of that prominent Democrats have already come out and said that that's the direction that they want to head. But uh, uh, I want to uh, tell you that I think we ought to be saying that like a mantra. Uh, that the Democrats, it, it, this is the evidence once and for all the Democrats did cause the shutdown. And uh, they did so uh, knowing that uh, Obamacare was full of holes and not ready for prime time. And that shows the height of uh, irresponsibility and, and uh, political maneuvering. Uh, Kathleen Sebelius is in Arizona today, and uh, she spoke uh, uh, to the, uh, the press. And this is what she said, because they asked her the question, we understand several people are calling for your resignation. What do you have to say about that? This is what she said. She said she doesn't work for the people calling for her to her step down. She doesn't work for the American people. Isn't that amazing? And that is the, the, the typical uh, Democrat response. They have an uh, uh, elitism that uh, they are not accountable to the people, that they are uh, somehow entitled to the positions of authority that they have over us. And I think we've got to do everything within our power uh, to hold them accountable. Uh, as we go forward, um, you know, what, what, what is the answer? Why? I, I think that, uh, like Senator Lee said, that... Um, this uh, website thing, it, 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 it's the tip of the iceberg. I mean, never mind the fact that they just blew through hundreds of millions of dollars paying a Canadian vendor to set up a system that just flat out doesn't even work. How about the idea that uh, they have a system where they uh, get you in uh, and, and they have you fill out all your personal information mm-hmm. uh, and they don't give you the price until the very, very end? Why? Because the price is so prohibitive that most people looking at it, like when you shop on Amazon.com, you look at something, it's way overpriced, you don't even go in and look at the explanation. You don't want to go any further. You click onto something else, you shop around. And so they understand that if they show the people the price up front, they're not going to be able to capture all that private information of people and not going to be able to have them by the short hairs. It is a system designed for failure, but I think the message that this uh, website is sending to people is that these guys are bush league. And that the president is either dishonest or incompetent or both. And it, it transfers, uh, this, the, the, the buckles with this website transfer over into the whole uh, notion of how Obamacare is going to be implemented as well. The fact is, healthy young people are not going to sign up for these policies. And the, the numbers of people that they're going to have to have to make this sustainable for the insurance companies to sign on to be in the exchanges, it's not, they're not going to happen. And this thing is going to go belly up. And so um, as this starts unfolding, I predict that Obama himself is going to do everything he can to keep kicking the can down the road and postponing the effects of Obamacare Mm -hmm. so that he can try to shield his people uh, from uh, the the, uh, next election and the harmful effects of Obamacare on on the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. We can't let that happen, though, folks. We have to keep talking about this uh, to whoever will listen, that uh, they own this 100%. Uh, that is completely evident after, you know, this uh, uh, this last debacle where they forced us into a shutdown, uh, and now they're all uh, willing 
to capitulate and accept uh, the terms that we offered before the shutdown now, uh, and, and we can't let them get away with that. We have to be uh, saying that, I believe, a couple of blue in the face. Uh, in the next uh, 30 days, there will be a series of hearings on Capitol Hill uh, regarding um, the rollout of this website. I think then it will get deeper and deeper into the actual lights and bolts uh, of Obamacare itself and uh, how unsustainable it is. And I believe that as this unravels, uh, the fortunes and the, uh, the polling numbers uh, for those of us that stood up uh, and fought on principle. And by the way, um, I, I'm so proud to be associated with both the two gentlemen that I'm on this call with today, the, the wonderful men uh, who put principle ahead of politics. And the other thing is that we work together, the Senate and the House, we work very closely together uh, on a constant basis. And that is good, uh, I think, uh, uh, good for things to come. I think that shows that we're going to be working together a lot more in the future as we deal with uh, this out-of-control spending that's going on in Washington, D.C., over and above Obamacare. So I'm optimistic that there will be a lot of good that ends up coming out of this. So uh, thanks a lot. Matt, I turn it back to you. Okay, thank you, Congressman. Uh, last but not least, uh, one of the quiet, steady, underspoken leaders who really held this fight together in the House. Uh, he'll never tell you that, but I will. Uh, Congressman Tom Grace from Georgia. Congressman, it's your turn. Well, thank you so much, Matt, and everybody on the call. And uh, I just want to take a few minutes and first start off by just uh, sharing our gratitude uh, for all the work that, that Freedom Works has done and the, the grassroots movement and how powerful it is. Uh, whenever you have an organic movement, uh, it influences uh, the outcomes, and I just want to thank you for that and keep that uh, that effort up. And to those on the call, any any uh, support you provide, both of you for you have had, uh, no no good to a good cause. Um, let me just uh, quick three things. One, uh, listen, Mike and, and Matt, great leaders in the Senate and the House, have done a great job for explaining uh, the chronological uh, uh, timeline of what occurred and, and laid it out beautifully. And I want to thank them for leadership. One thing that is clearly evident is that the, the shutdown was orchestrated by the Democrats. There's no doubt about that. And, and what tells you that is to look at the, the release of polls that were coming out right mm -hmm. prior and right after and how the questions were asked. And it was clear that the Democrats uh, felt like they would get a political game. They would they put the points on the board by forcing a shutdown. Uh, we were being very reasonable in the House. Uh, we, we had been the most unified we've ever been at, and I guess, in Congress and a half at least, uh, putting together proposals that funded the government, kept it running, and protected our constituents from Obamacare. And we did that in a, in a very uh, thoughtful and deliberate way in a process that each time, as clear as Mike said, that Perry Reid rejected and tabled and uh, refused to uh, really even allow his folks to, to, to vote on it. Uh, with, with um, the opportunity of even the simple things they're proposing now and that's delaying the individual mandate. So I think the world will know that uh, the, the President and Harry Reid own this. They own the shutdown. And uh, the second takeaway from all this episode was that Harry Reid, the strongest man in town in the Democratic Party, uh, Barack Obama took the back seat. You know, uh, he, 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 uh, I guess he elevated himself to nothing more than the Democratic Party chairman. Uh, and, and Harry Reid is the taking position of telling the president what step or next. Uh, that's a really interesting dynamic that developed. But moving ahead, I think it's real important that uh, as conservatives and as Republicans, that uh, we stay unified through these next days, weeks, months ahead. A lot of things are going to be thrown at us. Uh, these guys, uh, Democrats, are spinning in every which direction they can, whether it's a message, uh, pivoting here and there, uh, a lot of different things. But we have to stay unified. And we found in the House that we were our strongest, the more unified we were. And we are most unified when we're putting forward conservative, principle-based uh, ideas and solutions. And, and that's what held us together to the point that we actually had bipartisan support on bills going to the Senate uh, that were delaying the civil conference. So that's, that's absolutely remarkable. And then last point I'll make is that I think the next, uh, the next week uh, here could be very important. There is a vacuum to be 
what they are looking for right now. Uh, and I'm speaking not just to the, the grassroots leaders on the call, but also to the in the house uh, leaders on the call. They're they're clamoring for a solution, and we have an opportunity as Republicans to build this back with a solution that is free market based and empowers individuals, and empowers uh, that relationship between physicians and their patients, and empowers families uh, and. and Build this at this moment, this time, to say there is a better way. We can do this, we can do it with uh, the principles that we believe is conservative, uh, and, and that is right that forward. So I, I would leave those those items with you. We close with this. Uh, regardless of what the polls have said, how the questions have been asked, I can say I went back to my district after all, uh, whether it was going to a football game, whether it was walking through Home Depot, whether it was at church, it, no matter where it was, people think. They thanked us for standing up. And, and, and while we might not have prevailed the position we were advocating, they thanked us for standing up for them. And that is something I'll never forget. And uh, it inspires uh, the days ahead. So, Matt, thank you uh, for, for your leadership and organization. And uh, you know, I'll call with me. You guys are great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And, and you, make, you make the most important point that this fight on Obamacare is only enabled by the fact that, that all of the activists on the call and across the country were willing to uh, step up and, and do something to fix a problem that Washington wasn't willing to fix. And, and they, they helped every uh, legislator on this call, and they helped everyone else to find the problem and also to push the solution. I like the fact that you brought that up. Um, I, no one on this call needs to be reminded of this, but if you go to freedomworks.org, you will find um, a set of tools, um, a set of talking points explaining why Obamacare is failing, but also ideas, free market ideas, ideas based on conservative principles, ideas that are based on making sure that patients and doctors make decisions and not for a suited bureaucrat. And I think I think we have to push that positive message of what real reform is all about, again, from the bottom up. Maybe Washington is not going to do that for us. We certainly aren't going to see the Democrats. <coughs> we can do that. And so, so check that out. Uh, make sure that you go to the healthcare war room to get those tools if you don't already have them. And again, if anyone is interested to help us support these efforts, please press star three to donate. There are folks in the Freedom Works office that are willing to help you with that. So let's go to questions. Uh, we have a great Whitney Neal. I'm screening calls as we speak. Uh, Whitney, are you ready with the first question? I am. We have a lot of activists that joined the call tonight that are so thankful for the messages you've shared, and they have some great questions. The first one comes from Christian Onzel out of New York, and he wants to know, for those activists, those people who are concerned, and they're under 30, um, you know, how can they make the argument, how will you guys be working to make the argument to their peers how Obamacare is going to significantly hurt the millennial generation? This, of course, is the generational theft of forcing young people to pay more and more, even though they make less and are more healthy, to transfer that to people that are more wealthy and less healthy. This is a, a fundamental design flaw, and, and we've encouraged young people to burn their Obamacare card. And we've done a lot of that, that sort of protesting and had some fun doing it. But, Senator Lee, I wonder if you have an answer to Sure. And, you know, I think it is important to point that out. 